Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. I'm Elaine Cha. If you're a long-time listener, hello, and thank you for welcoming me. If you're a first-timer, we have something in common, too, because this is my first day hosting St. Louis on the Air, so thank you as well for experiencing this with me. It is seriously (laughs) so exciting to be in this host chair. It's also a genuine honor and privilege to be here with you all. I'm looking forward to sharing this and other community spaces with you in the future. Now to the show part of the show. Later in the hour, we'll explore black veganism with a guest whose journey reflects the hows and whys directly linked to the personal and the collective. But first, best books of 2022. A good book list inspires good reading. And when you've got two such lists, plus the brains behind those picks, that's the makings of some fantastic conversation. Joining me in studio to prove that point is Tammy Jones, St. Louis County Library Associate at the Parkview Branch. That's the one located near Vanita Park. Welcome to you. Thank you for having me. And Megan Temple, St. Louis Public Library Branch Manager at the Baden Branch. Megan, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me as well. So since we are talking bests here, let's begin with quick definitions from each of you. So Megan, what did best mean as you built your book list? I chose books that were engaging. I'm a very, um, it may sound a little cliche, but I picked most of the books um, from cover art. And so I went from cover art and then it normally, when it pulls me in, I get to reading the back of the book. Okay. <laughs> but um, the book, the more engaging books that I had um, and suspenseful and action books is what made my best book list. Okay. <laughs> so engagement, suspense, and action. <laughs> Tammy, how about you? What working definition of best guided your picks? Um, best means to me um, great writing. Um, I always look for great writing. Um, if you can imagine the story in your head, then you know that the author um, has done the work. Um, so that's what I think about best. I also read um, what's trending, um, and um, I read a lot of historical fiction. So I look for authors um, who write historical fiction. Um, some of my books are a lot of sophomore debuts. Um, this is their second book. So um, I like to read somebody who's already you know, started, um, started writing. Okay, great. So there is a difference in your best, and that's great because then I think it will connect with many of the, the people who are listening today. Now, you're both full-time bookworms, and you've both selected several titles each. So I'd like to take advantage of this bounty, right, of, of tastes and expertise with a couple of questions that zero in on the most shareable bests of best. And at this point, we also want you, the listeners, to join in this conversation. So if you've got a question or a comment on 2022's Best Books, give us a call at 314-382-8255. That's 382-TALK or email us at talk at stlpr.org. So Tammy, which of your picks would you recommend to somebody who wants to start and finish a book before 2022 ends? Um, I would recommend um, Last Summer on State Street by uh, Toya Wolf. Um, okay. It's a short book. I've read it in maybe two days. Um, it's about um, Fifi, um, whose real name is Felicia. She, she's growing up in the uh, Chicago projects in 1999, and they're about to tear her building down. So she's trying to build um, relationships and friendships, and um, she's 12 years old, so um, she wants to go out and play and jump rope. And because of the violence and the things that go on in the project, she can't do that. Um, And she meets um, a group of friends, um, young girls in the projects, and they all have different 
experiences. You know, one is um, her mother is uh, on drugs. Um, Fifi's mother um, is very strict. Um, another young girl, her mother, they're very religious. So she meets all these girls in, um, in the projects. And does that book end with uh, a view from the the more adult side? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Fifi, um, it 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 it's like a coming of age story. So Fifi does grow up, and um, you also see that in the book. Also, as and when she becomes an adult, she goes off to college and becomes an adult. So she's trying to just you know continually foster those relationships. Okay. And then it also sounds like a book that in itself sort of it it, it has a finish. Yes, it has a finish. Okay. Yes, it has a finish. Great. Megan, as far as your list is concerned, is there a book on your best list that you would hand to someone as an enthralling sort of you can't, you will not put this down book? Yeah, I would suggest Moon Witch, Spider King by Marlon James. Um, This is the second book, though, in his um, The Dark Star Trilogy. And um, it's part adventure tale, part chronicle, it's about a woman who bows to no man, <laughs> and it's a fascinating novel that explores power, personality, and places where they all overlap. Okay, great. So a series, and the second one, and then you had mentioned that you liked to read sophomore Yeah, I books. like to read sophomore books. Okay, so um, there's a, a connection here. Hmm. Great. If you want to see both of Tammy's and Megan's lists, we've got them up now at stlonair.show, especially if you were not able to, to jot down those titles as they were speaking. So Megan, I'm gonna ask a, a question here that is connected to your start as a, a library professional, right? Mm-hmm. You got your start uh, in library youth services. Mm-hmm. And I'm a big fan of young adult literature and mm-hmm. kids lit as well. Mm-hmm. Is there a young adult book on your list that you'd hand to a patron regardless of age as a kind of gateway to more YA work? Um, Yes. Um, The Golden State by Merritt Weisenberg. I love that book. It's a coming-of-age mystery, and I'm a mystery person. (laughs) And uh, it's perfect for for fans who enjoy romantic subplots. So it has a little bit of romance and a little bit of mystery as well. But Weisenberg created a plot that... Is relatable to teens, but then also adults as well, because it keeps up with the times with technology and the social media that he um, talks about in the story. Mm-hmm. Great. Is that a book that you have seen? Um, no, I haven't seen that. Um, I usually read a YA book um, every year. Like I have this thing where I read certain books every year, but I haven't seen that. But I'd be interested in it. Okay. Um, but I, I do read a YA book every year. Okay. Yeah. So Tammy. By many accounts, this would not be a best of anything without a Beyonce reference. Okay, so the sources tell us that your nickname is the Beyonce of books. Yes. How does your list overall reflect why you've earned that moniker? Um, I read what's trending. Um, I read what's trending, and I read uh, people you may not know. Um, and I keep it, uh, I keep it, uh, simple. Um, I also read, um, a lot of, um, most of my authors are African American. Um, so I stick to that. Um, and I, and I like researching and finding books that a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, like I said, sophomore titles, um, and I'm looking for good writing. I'm looking for good writing. So can you give me an example of, uh, of good writing? Um, my favorite, um, Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez. Um, it's a story of two young girls who um, grew up in a small um, Alabama town. Um, they were poor. Um, and Sybil Townsend is their nurse. And she comes um, and gives, administers um, birth control shots to them, and they end up um, being sterilized without um, their permission. It's based on a true story of the Ralph sisters um, in 1973. Um, the case went all the way to the Supreme Court. Um, Dolan Perkins Valdez just brings this story to life. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't know anything about this story. Um, She brings it to life. It's my best book. Um, It's great writing, um, and it's it's wonderful. I I put myself right in the story. I could have been friends with Sybil. Um, um, And I felt for the girls. I've 
it was it was just great writing all around. Right. All around. Is that a book that you then own yourself? Yes, I own it. Yeah, okay. I, I brought so, it with me today. I own oh, it. Yeah. Great. <laughs> I own it. Well, and because you are librarians, you know, you have access to these books. That's something that I was wondering about is which of the ones in your lists they're they are best for reasons. But Megan, is there a book on your list that you have purchased because you want to keep it? Well, I did purchase by the book by Jasmine Guillory. Um, she had a series, but I like this one <laughs> because uh, it was like uh, Enemies to Lover, and it was a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, and that's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> But it it was different. Um, it had black and multiracial protagonists, and it just the cover. <laughs> it was bright, and it brought me in, and, and that's why I just picked it up in the beginning, and then I ended up buying it later on. We need to take a quick break, but we'll be back shortly on St. Louis Public Radio. Welcome back. So, Megan, true crime is hot on the small screen. It seems like there's a new true crime TV series every couple of weeks. Now, you've got a book on your list called Bone Deep, Untangling the Betsy Feria Murder Case. Can you tell us what makes this one compelling, whether you're into true crime or not? Yes, and I just think anybody can probably just jump into this. But um, the the husband, Russ Farrar, he was actually prosecuted, charged and prosecuted and convicted of his wife's 2011 murder. And it was actually here in Missouri. So that's what made it very interesting <laughs> to me. But um, they had, he had an alibi and everything, and they still prosecuted him. So it was a, it was a well-known case here in Missouri. Mm-hmm. So... So that was the the connection sort of to the local. Yeah, and the local, Tammy, you had right. mentioned that this almost made it on your list as right. well. It almost, yeah, it almost made it on my list because true crime is really what's hot. Um, and it's local. Um, and it's, 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 it's about the Pam Huff, Huff uh, case also. Mm-hmm. Um, so it almost made it on my list. Um, I was going to choose a uh, true crime, uh, Blood in the Water, um, by Silver David Cameron. Um, it takes place in Nova Scotia. Um, so I was going to choose that, um, but it was it was published in 2021. Um, but it is one of my it was one of my favorites, um, uh, Blood in the Water. But that 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 bone deep is is good. That mm-hmm. bone deep is good. Um, it's local um, and it's almost unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost unbelievable. Yes. Yeah. And just a note that we are we have been that is talking about books released this year in 2022. But I'm mm-hmm. glad that you mentioned one from 2021, mm-hmm. because certainly there are books that we, we love to return to mm-hmm. and that we, we reread, right? right. Yeah. Um, one of the other things, too, our, our producer, Emily Woodbury, she is actually midway through Gabrielle Zevin's Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and loving it and has added that you don't need to be a video game nerd to enjoy it, but it mm-hmm. certainly helps. And... Um, is there a book, Tammy, maybe on your list that is ostensibly for people who follow a certain thing, but um, you know there is appeal for people who are not aficionados of, of a particular you know, subject or topic? Um, I I uh, chose uh, Chasing Lakes. Um, it's nonfiction, Love, Science, and the Secrets of the Arctic by Dr. Uh, Katie Walter. Um, it deals with uh, climate change, um, love. Um, she leaves home at 16 because she's not feeling love there. And she travels from Alaska to Siberia and ends up studying um, methane um, emissions. Um, but along the way, she meets a Minnesota farmer who becomes her husband. So um, and she falls in love and um, and she has children. She has a, her own family now. So it talks about that journey. Also, the scientific um, side of things. So um, I thought that was just a great book because it 
you know, she thought maybe she would never find love again, and she did. And it was also Mm -hmm. self-discovery. She learned a lot about herself um, doing that journey. So this was a nonfiction book? This is a nonfiction book. Um, But I I think it it explains climate change, love, and science. It puts it all together, Um, and and it's personal. Um, She makes it very personal. Okay. And Joe tweets that the best book he read this year is We Don't Know Ourselves by Fenton O'Toole. And it is also a 2021 release that's a personal history of modern Ireland by Irish journalist and writer Fenton O'Toole from 1958 to the present day. So this, there's a theme, I guess, of discovery and connection with yes. history, mm-hmm. what has happened um, close, maybe right. a far away mm-hmm. too, right, um, mm-hmm. in history as well. So... Uh, the next thing that I would love to hear about is surprises. And this is a question for, for both of you. We'll start with you, Megan. Was there a surprise favorite among these books? You had mentioned that you're really drawn to covers, right? Mm-hmm. So is there a book among the ones you've chosen that doesn't necessarily have the most eye-catching cover art, but it ended up being good enough to put on this list? I, yes, um, Fairy Tale by Stephen King. Because I have a hot and cold relationship with reading Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> it was so thick. And I was like, hmm. But it was his newest book that just came out. And then I heard good reviews on it. It's like a fantasy sci fi mm-hmm. um, book about a young a young man um, who inherited um, a shed. But. Um, I was surprised that I finished it, <laughs> but I liked it a lot. <laughs> yeah. How did you approach finishing it? Did you read it in chunks, or was it just so compelling that you found yourself? It was compelling. I oh. found myself going. I related to, like, the character. Like, it brought me, it made me feel nostalgic. Oh. It made, it, it brought, and King has a way of doing, like, bring you back to your childhood. <laughs> so... I was reading it, but it was a surprise when I was turning the pages. At the beginning of each chapter, it was like a cover art. Not cover art, but it was art in the book. Okay. So, And I wasn't used to a Stephen King book with art inside. So there was some visual text in there. Yes. That's that's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that you two have had an opportunity to meet one another and sort of hear about your, uh, your respective picks... Is there a book on the list that you have right now that you would recommend or give to one another? Yes, I, I do. Okay. Um, Tell me. <laughs> an, another best book. Um, I listened to it on audio book. Mm-hmm. Um, the cover is beautiful. Uh, you'll like it. It's uh, Finding Me by Viola Davis. Um Oh, my goodness. Um, she is a trained actress. Her voice, mm-hmm. just reading the book, the, the the words just jumped off the pages. Mm-hmm. Um, just beautifully written. Um, I, I couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I listened to that on, listened to her uh, read the book on audio. She's mm-hmm. the narrator. It was just great. Um, it's an Oprah book club. It's a bestseller. Uh, man. Unreal. You you need to read it. If you're a fan of Viola Davis, uh, you need to read that book. Yeah. Yes. It was on my list as well of books I need to read. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say um Hell Followed Us. It's a YA book. Okay. Um it's a fast paced adventure. Okay. I like adventure. (laughs) Okay. It's a little chaotic, but in the best way. Uh Um it features a diverse and relatable character whom I fell in love with. So I think that would be a good book. Okay. All right. I'll have to get it. <laughs> in terms of uh, 2023 and sort of thinking about what's coming, is there one book that you are really looking forward to reading in the next year, Megan? I can't think at the moment. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are there Wait, no, it is. I'm sorry. Right, oh, no, no. no I haven't read it yet. But I'm excited for um, Humans of St. Louis by Lindsay Drew. Yes. Lovely yeah. book. Coffee, <laughs> coffee table book. Um, 
lovely book. Uh, we, we looked through it at the library, and somebody had checked it out, so we couldn't get it, but we looked through it. It's lovely. It's a lovely book. And, and full disclosure, um, I'm one of the co-editors of the, oh. <laughs> of the Humans of St. Louis book, so okay. I, I work very closely with Lindy uh, okay. to put that together. And um, I, I mean, as far as a, a book that now people can't get their hands on, Mm-hmm. They have mm-hmm. to come to the the library yes. in order to get them. Um, tell me about you know what has reception been to that local book specifically. Um, the reception has been uh, good as far as as far as we know when it comes to um, local local authors. Um, that book alone. Um, we had to have it was it was it was a put on hold, so we had to have it sent over. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sh- and I'm sure that it's probably had tons of holes on it. Mm-hmm. So I think the reception has just been excellent. Um, and we just we thumbed through it <laughs> at the library because we only had that one copy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but I think the reception has just been excellent. Um, you know, for that book. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, it has been uh, such a pleasure to talk with you, Tammy and Megan. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. It's great. Thank Thanks. You. Today's episode was produced by Emily Woodbury with audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our production intern is Avery Rogers. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Our podcast proudly supports St. Louis artists by using music from Life Creative Group. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations and leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to conservation and careful management of the state's forests to make them more resilient and better habitats for wildlife. Choosewood.com.